What God is, is the creator of all things. And his essence is in all things. Um, from trees, from the ocean, the suns, to rocks. Everything the creator created, right? Now, with these inanimate objects, they don't really have a code of behavior because whatever they was created for by the Most High God, they're standing in that glory. You know, if there's no water in the ocean, it's not ocean anymore, it's a desert. So it changes in what it actually represents. So as soon as you change, you're not that thing anymore. And um, the creator, what you want to say, God, I'm going to say the creator, the Most High, and hopefully by the time this is over with, y'all understand exactly what God is. It's not even a reason for somebody to say that they don't believe in, in God unless they don't understand what God is. On Sundays and some other days, synagogue days, church days, you, you're being taught religion, like the ways that these different people serve the creator. Now, that comes with culture. All cultures are different, speak different languages. So you have these people that's practicing Judaism. You have these people that's practicing Christianity. You have these people that's practicing being Muslim. But the problem with all these things is it's a man involved in all of it that's over you. And you get your instructions from man. When the principles of, of our creator is written in the book that people like to diss or say is inconsistent or there's corruption in there. And um, it is because it was written by man in his best attempt to explain what the creator was at the time that he was doing it. All creation communicates for the creator. You know, um, you just got to be an idiot to believe anything else. Trees communicate. Trees let you know that there's shade under them. Water communicates. You know what water, what it tells you that it's cool and it's good for your thirst. And that's what the Most High wants you to know from that water. So with anything else, the Creator uses us to communicate what He wants from us. And most of us know it's, it's on you from the essence. And I'm not speaking God in the sense of going to church every Sunday. I'm speaking God in the sense of being in line with what He created me for. Just like trees are in line with what trees were created for. Um, fucking Molly, stay. Y'all see if she stay photobombing. Trees um do what trees do, right? The oxygen does what oxygen does. They're not fighting to be something else or coming up with policies to enslave bushes. See, God is order. And the only species on the planet that seems to be out of that order is us, the humans, because we deduct and reason. So now the thing that created us we putting that on a scale with our own thinking and charging the creator to be like us. Um, you see Molly right there? Molly's a cat. And by my human logic, I can't charge Molly with thinking like me. So I'm, I'm, if, if Molly was such a such a such a, why don't she do this, that, and a third? That's not order. That's you being rebellious. That's basically a, a child telling their parent that they want to go to this party and the parent saying, no, it's too dangerous. I know what can happen. Will it happen? Maybe, maybe not. Does the parent have more, more information, more, more time served on the planet to draw up that conclusion? Yes, absolutely. But a child is still rebel against the parent, whether they know the best or not. And this is, this is what we are as people. We constantly in rebellion against our creator. And, um, society will show you that and don't get it fucked up just because some things move and go along it don't mean that it's put together properly you know how many times you built something with all the pieces and then when you got finished you got like extra pieces there you're like i don't need this shit and you throw it out in that chair or a table it lasts for a little while and then later on down the road that shit wobbly it's missing the screw now you know where that shit went at but at that time you wasn't thinking that's because the pace that life moves at is so fast, you don't have sit time to sit back and actually breathe things in. We've been we've been at go. We we actually um, I said this before. We under spells, witchcraft and strong delusions, and all it takes is to be repetitive with it, and you'll act out what the word is or what people are saying. Um, our vision is so jacked up. The world is so crooked. Um. Our emotions outweigh righteousness in this world. Our emotions 
outweigh what's good and what's just to do, you can take for granted. I'm using Molly right now because she's moving around. Um, if Molly was to have kittens and one of her kittens was deformed or jacked up or wasn't going to make it, she would kill that, that kitten. And we wouldn't think anything less of Molly. We wouldn't understand how nature is. That's what God, animals aren't malicious. He's not like he's saying, I'm going to kill this baby. I hate that baby. That's not, move Molly. You're doing too much now. That's not what's going to happen. You know, that's for the survival of that species. That's for the uh, the humanity of, of that animal. How would that animal survive out in the wild, right? But what do we do as human beings when you have a child that's slow, retarded, or something like that? Out of your compassion, you, I'm going to take the best care of this baby ever. How? What kind of life is that child really going to have? I know it's a tough decision, but this is reality. Like, this is what God is. And people people would say stuff like, what kind of God would, would put his babies to death? Or, look, I don't know what kind of God would. What I know is I don't have the answers down here. I can't stop death from coming. So I don't have that answer. And this is the problem with God's creations. When man can't figure shit out, he just get mad at God and say it can't be. It's amazing how fragile and weak we are as, as a species and how proud we like to pretend we are when it comes time to dealing with this creator. All of y'all faced death before. All of y'all faced heartbreak. All of y'all get up and go to work every morning. You can't control any of that. And you run around here barking at the creator. It's funny. And then to say you don't believe in the creator, it's, it's essentially you don't believe in yourself. What's not to believe? The laws, the books, the uh, morality in that book, that's to be in, in order. That's to walk in order as a nation, not as in church or religion. That has nothing to do with the book at all. It's about us being what we call to be. Um, if you lived in a society full of basketball players, basketball is not religion. It's a way of life. You take Steph Curry. Um, he's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. But in the basketball world, you rather have Steph Curry shooting your threes, right? Even though he's not perfect, you can see he's about that life. So nobody's going to go around and accuse Steph Curry of not being a man of basketball, right? A uh, man of basketball won't miss any shots. Sure he will. But he out there shooting them. He out there practicing basketball. So those law statutes and commandments is to practice divinity. To walk and order your creator has nothing to do with that building. It was never any buildings mentioned in the original text or the original characters, which is um, a Semitic script or Aramaic Hebrew. And it wasn't words, y'all. Let me real quick. The um, the more you familiar with the creator or the people that was identified with bringing them forth, you understand something about these people. Um, they didn't use letters. They spoke in characters and they spoke in what their environment was. So if they saw an ox, that was the letter, like, that's the A, actually, it's the letter A, the olive, ox head, ox nose. So, um, you can't mistake that. If you see a house, that's B, bet, the letter B. So, you see uh, the letter B, and you see something that has to do with intelligence, you can think that that's a school. You can't untranslate this, right? It's brick, it's concrete. So, these words you live in, it's witchcraft. They'll say the words, they'll say it, and then you'll act out to become that thing. You got words like gay that has dual meanings here. You can't have dual meanings in Hebrew. It's going to sound completely different. So, and it's not about Hebrew, and I don't want it to be about that as well. Um, even my stance on that is changing because that's just culture. Whoever received whoever received these laws, and I want to call them law statutes and commandments too because it's bordering on religion and it's just a code for us to get along with us people. You know, the scripts that was written, it was inspired by the Most High and um, all civilizations have manuscript. Everybody has manuscripts. So if you're going to question the origin of, of the scriptures, you got to question the origin of everything that was ever written. And that's only fair. And then if we start from there, you dig in these books that was written and compare them all and see which one has the most morality in it. And if it wasn't passed down 
by the most high to create himself why is it so hard for man to just do what's in there why is it such a, a task to keep these statues and commandments and this culture it was it was for a group of people of nations so we wouldn't have what we have now what we live in now and back then most of the people shunned away from it was saying god with the same understanding that people have now they thinking god is this mysterious robe wearing figure this is why i don't deal with jesus because as long as there's a man in between you and the essence of the creator you won't get it you can't and um that book is just a get out molly before i kick your ass that book is just a reference point. I'm going to really fuck you up. Excuse me, y'all, because let me tell y'all what's going on right now. This is how the creator works again. That's another energy in the room, even from something like Molly to get me off track from delivering this message. You have to be on point all the time because this world is at war with the creator. And when you walk in oneness with the creator, the things of this world don't really bother you. So from my time of waking up to now, like, I've changed a couple thousand times. You can't seek the truth out and stay in the same place. It's one of the reasons why, and I still keep the law, statutes, and commandments. So the Abrahamic faith, but I'm no longer linked to Hebrew, Israelite, anything like that. Those are constructs of man. Um, the Most High God is in all of us. Whether you receive them or not, it's up to you. But most people get bits and pieces of the Creator. They'll have this attribute or that attribute. And none of us could seem to put it all together because we torn in 500 different ways at this point in life. But God is God. It's no denying God. It's the essence of what is good. You know it's in you. You have to refuse it. You have to rebel against God. So you see people angry because they can't figure it out. Why is God allowing this to happen? Why is God allowing that to happen? He's not allowing it to happen. It's happening because God isn't in these people that's doing it. God is order. It's the essence of what we was created in. It's not church on Sundays. That's why this stuff keeps happening. Those pastors, they don't have any idea who the creator is, man. They there for something else. Mostly money. Primarily money. And your whole world is mixed up, you know? I know a bunch of you know that I smoke a gang of marijuana. And I'm not going to stop smoking it. It's totally healthy for me, like... Y'all know how old I am? Some of y'all do, some of y'all... Well, it's not even important, but look at me. You can't deny what you see. You can be mad, and that's you not, not walking in line with God. You're going to lie to your eyes seeing what you see. I have a routine that I do every day. You know, and I, everything that I do, everything I do is with the Most High in mind, God in mind. We have to work, we have to do all these things, but you take care of these tasks with the essence of the Most High in your heart and all these things have to work out for you we all have to work right the essence of work is to provide for your family right not to shine not to be the highest paid whatever it's just to have your peace to have what you need in your home when you understand this through the most high you won't gravitate to all these material values right then you can understand what abundance is because as long as you chase the material it'll be new material to chase that's not God-like. So subtly, you get out of the essence of what the Most High God is. Of course you don't believe in Him. You're chasing everything earthly. To understand who the Most High is, you got to walk outside of that. In your spirituality. Now, I have some earthly things, you know. I used to chase them a lot. From automobiles, had the BMW, gray BMW, red Lexus Coupe, uh, white Volvo XC90 truck. All these things... At that time, I didn't think I was being materialistic because I wasn't drug dealing. I wasn't rimming the trucks and cars up. But I, I was materialistic just like everybody else. But I rationalized it out because I didn't act like everybody else. Lying to myself and essentially the creator because I was out of line with the most high created me to be. That was me trying to look away for other people to try to get my satisfaction from how other eyes view me. And when you get into that realm, it's, it's hard. You, you're not dealing with the Most High God. You're dealing with vanity. You're dealing with yourself. And that's not an attribute of the Most High. So to understand who God is, you got to be honest with yourself. Stop looking outside of yourself for God. Stop looking at everybody else for evil, right? It's you. Um, if I did what God asked me to do, 
every day and I got up and that was my intent and you did it and the rest of the people did it too. The times that they jacked up and made mistakes would be so far and few in between, society would be a success. Kind of like the boy Steph Curry hitting his threes. He practiced that. That's his lifestyle till he not complaining about all the threes he take. Because when it's game time, it's second nature to him. So you practice these things at the most high. So when life is, when it's on, it's just like practice to you. So the essence of God ain't this being that you can put a robe on. He don't have a son named Jesus. What you see in these scripts is just regular men. He say it's regular men that he'll raise up and say, keep my essence and do what I'm telling you. Those laws, statutes, and commandments, we got eating laws in there. People want to say stuff like, oh, what good, what good is an eating law? Well, people understand things about being fat. They understand about, excuse me, they understand about chemical leaks. They understand about chemical reactions. So some food is going to cause different reactions in your body. Is that going to allow you to vibrate at the frequency you need enough? Or is that going to block some of your vibrations to your essence of God? And I do believe in God, but I have to break this down so y'all understand what God is. It's not this person, you know. It has to be some higher, some higher intelligence. Trees don't have sex, but they reproduce. Somehow they manage to be here. You know, um, white people, y'all taking fertility drugs to do what God created us to do. That should tell you something, man. Like, get in line. You know, all of us, we chasing down these other values that these people have. Um, you placing your value outside of what's natural. When you get back to the essence, God is easy. Y'all out here serving membership, church every Sunday. God don't have nothing to do with that. He's not in there. That's not the essence of who he is. Look at yourselves. Look at videos of church. It's nothing natural about that. All we call to do is walk around in order. Y'all doing everything but... And to the people that don't believe in God, you don't believe in yourself. He created you. Like, everything in you is from the creator. You have to rebel against it. You know when you're doing right, and you know when you're doing wrong. You ignore it, but you know. We all went our way to a certain extent, right? And most of us would do anything to get it. From lie, you know you've been lied to, cheated on. And listen, y'all. If you allow even a little lie in your life or people to lie just a little bit and you don't correct it, you're going to be the victim of a lie. So that's that's what the creator promises you. And it may not be at the time that you think, but it's always recompense. He guaranteed that. That's one of his characteristics. And if you read the book, you can pick up his characteristics more so than the religion in the book. That's what I did. And like everybody else. I went in with a blind eye trying to find this God, this mystery God. And the more I sought out the truth, the more the more the creator shared with me. So I'm not religious at all. You know, I'm real with what God is. Right now, I'm about to fire this weed up, right? Let me explain this to you as well so you don't think the demonization of marijuana, people calling you a weed hit. The most high God created this, right? And you have to sit down and look me in my eye and understand that. The Most High God created that, the same as he created tomatoes, oregano, basil. What I do is I smoke, I, I inhale marijuana because it alters, it does alter your mind state. And that's not bad. Like, you're locked in all day long. It's a rat race. You can't get outside of your normal programming. When you smoke marijuana, it changes everything. And it's not one of those drugs that's, that's hallucinogenic. You know exactly what time it is. And then you actually take on other other looks, other views of things. So when you're smoking marijuana, you hear people saying the craziest shit. Like for me, I'm on 1T1. Most people go 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 14, 15, 16, 21, 22, 23. I'm like, when we get to 11, why not just 1T1, 1T2, 1T3? Sound crazy, right? I'm not joking. This is the kind of things that you do when you enlighten, but... They take these things away from you, and they give you the things that dumb your mind down. It's wrong for you to smoke marijuana. This is what the Most High created, but it's okay for you to take that volume. These things that they created, like this K2, the synthetic marijuana, right? We have marijuana. 
And the crazy thing is, is our people, earthly people, the people of the ground, tauntauns, we the ones that say, oh, it's no good. Look, I'm in better shape than a gang of y'all, and I smoke marijuana heavy every day. You have to do something about that. You can't just brush that off and say I don't exist. I'm right in front of you right now. See, this is the lying that we do to our people because we out of line with ourselves. God to create. I need a goddamn uh, oh, there it is, excuse me. And once you in line with the creator, you don't care who's out of line with you because you are meeting what you exist for. People can judge. Well, they can't even judge me at this point. You can say stuff about me, but it won't register because your whole system is fake, like your value system, everything y'all believe. Look, where does it lead? There's never any ending with the stuff that we've been doing the way we've been doing it. It keep happening or another person plugs in and takes the place, right? When it's successful, it's in game. You don't have to do it anymore. People don't play basketball forever. They don't play baseball forever. They don't play these sports forever. At a certain point, they out. And the riches that they made from that sport is sustain their life for the rest of their life. That's what working was supposed to be. You know, not this retirement, like you work 20 years, it take 20 years to work. Within seven years, you should have your riches. This is biblical. You high out for seven years, by the time you get done working for that person, you should have enough of your own resources where you can hire somebody out, right? And go from there. That's godly. That's order. No taxes. That's godly. Fair skills. That's godly. Do you get that? You don't get that at all. So you living in a godless world and you don't believe in God. So it matches up perfectly. If we walked out these things that was in the scripture, it wouldn't matter who you were. The money would make a difference. You would behave in a godly fashion. So, And people think with God is just all good, good, good. That's how it's supposed to be. But God is a just God, so it's reprimand and reward. And that's the thing that people don't like. We don't like reprimand. We like reward. We like excuses. So if I do something, I did it. God didn't do it. If I kill a little girl, I killed a little girl. God didn't let it happen. If I get sex outside of wedlock, God ain't short and pull my penis out of that woman. I did that, right? If I fornicate, I did that. Nobody said, why God let him fuck my girlfriend? If God said, no. In my mind, I decided what I wanted to do, and I did it. It's called uh, being a free moral agent. The creator wants you to walk in his essence. It's your choice. Or you can walk another way, and then we'll see it in our society. But God is in us. He created us with his breath. You know, there's nothing else. You can be mad all you want, try to get all the knowledge that you can, but you're not going to figure out God. There's no way to outfigure him. Um, what you can do is... Try those law, statutes, and commandments in the scriptures. And if they don't work or your life don't change or the people around you don't change for the better, then God don't work. But until you can do that, you're basically just angry at yourself because you don't know how to access the most. So I'm going to take this rip on camera so y'all can see me get it in too. I smoke a gang of weed daily. Ride five miles a day on the bike and a thousand push-ups. I'm establishing my relationship with the creator. Not through your tradition. Not the tradition of this man, that man. What I'm doing is walking in what pleases the creator. Walking in what he made natural for us. I don't take advantage of any other man. I don't wish to be in control of any other man. I'm fair with my skills. No outer sex. No outer wedlock sex. No outer covenant sex. I walk in these covenants. I don't celebrate any days. Feast days of man. Christmas, Easter. This is what I do. Daily. And it's just being God-like. It ain't that I'm better than y'all. It's the essence of my creator. So these are the tenets. These are the laws, statutes, and commandments. So I get up and pursue that every day. It has nothing to do with being self-righteous. I'm not righteous, and those aren't my rules. 
what I am willing to do is operate outside myself to be more like the creator, to walk in the essence of the creator. So you can run around here trying to say you manifesting yourself. You're not. When you can stop death, then I'll follow what you're saying. Until then, you're at the same place that I am because death is the equalizer. And I know it's a creator that born life, so it's a creator that take that life back. And it's not man, so you can believe in a big bang if you want. It's been big bang if ever. Every time a bomb go off, that's a big bang. Life not created from that. So walk in your essence and know who the most high really is. You having trouble after this, hit me up. We can talk offline. It's not religion. It's not saying his name proper. We're not even supposed to be pronouncing his name or looking to say his name. That's in vanity. We supposed to walk in the ordinance. That's so other people walk just like us. Then we have heaven on earth. Shalom.